Welcome back, everyone, in YouTube land. This is your tinfoil hat economist coming back to you at the speed of light with episode number nine of Investing in the Age of Coronavirus. Well, as I predicted over the weekend in episode number eight, the U.S. stock market opened up and there was a sell-off. We're looking at double-digit declines on Monday, which was yesterday, March 16. And I have to say, I think the outlook is gloom. I hate to be gloomy. I was, I was hoping I was wrong with this prediction, but I was right. And why is the outlook gloomy? Well, Washington, D.C. has not come up with an economic plan that is coherent or large enough. President Donald Trump's plan for a payroll tax cut holiday through the end of the year, very good idea, has not been embraced by U.S. Congress. We are seeing some strange ideas out there. GOP Senator Mitt Romney has called for $1,000 a month to every adult in the entire United States for as long as these lockdowns persist. Well, and that's the GOP. On the Democratic side, I guess I'll have to try to top that. I much prefer any plan that tries to keep workers on their jobs, like the Trump administration payroll tax cut. Now, so what's ahead for Wall Street? Well, as we turn to the Federal Reserve, that's the U.S. Central Bank, I, they're pretty much, I know, I think they're out of ammo, let me put it in simple terms. They can cut interest rates, they can go to negative interest rates, they can increase the size of quantitative easing. But quantitative easing is really just the buying of bonds on globalized capital markets. There's gluts of capital. I don't see how adding to the gluts of capital will stimulate aggregate demand within the United States. Federal deficit spending can, and helicopter drops would be the best. Now, until recently, helicopter drops were more or less heresy within monetary policy circles. As, as we saw last August, Stanley Fisher, former vice chairman of the U.S. Federal Reserve Board, former governor of the Bank of Israel, professor at MIT, professor at University of Chicago. He has students. His students were people like Ben Bernanke and Mario Draghi, the former president of the European Central Bank. So, I don't know how I can cite a higher authority, but Stanley Fisher in August of 2019 released a paper through his employer BlackRock, the world's largest money manager, and he called for helicopter drops in the right circumstances. Well, if coronavirus collapse of the economy and our financial system is not the right circumstance, I don't know what is. So, let's turn our antenna to what will happen in the stock market in the coming months. The signal I receive, uh, based upon, I actually sent, I actually received a signal from the past, and I had our graphics department gin up this for you. That's pretty hard to do. I don't know if you can see that. Okay, these are previous bear markets. So from 73 to 74, the bear market was down 48%. 2000 to 2002, the bear market was 49%. 2007 to 2009, bear market 56%. There were a couple smaller bear markets in between, but those were kind of lesser trigger type recessions, not fundamental recessions and bear markets connected together, of course. So, see that number 56, that number 49, that number 48, do you see a pattern there? Do you see any similarity in those numbers? Do those numbers suggest anything to you, like cutting the pie in half? Do you think maybe uh, about half? Well, yeah, I think about half. I think on the basis of, of previous bear markets in which there were troubling recessions, we can, and, or triggering events such as the oil embargo of 73-74, uh, I think we're looking at a bear market of about 50%, and I'm roughing it out, I think we're down about 35% now. 
So you can look for about another 15% drawdown, and hopefully somewhere around there we've reached bottom. I sure hope that's the bottom. And then I would advise buying in. Um, these things do pass. Now there is one caveat out there. If this is the way, if this is the game plan for future viruses, shutting down the economy and wrecking our and sh wrecking our financial systems and investments. Remember, we have a globalized economy today. That means anytime there's a new virus anywhere in the world, it'll spread globally. And if every time we respond to these new viruses by economic shutdowns, I think we can expect lower PE ratios on stock markets going forward. How much lower? I don't know. Interest rates are at zero. The PE ratios could go up, but relatively, I think I think this could be a risky environment for for equities in perpetuity if this is how we treat uh, every every virus that's introduced. Okay, so uh, I have a a, t a tip for uh, entrepreneurs. Uh, you know, the wearing of tinfoil hats, by my example, may become quite popular, but these things are pretty hot. They don't breathe. So if you perforate your commercially available tinfoil hats, I suspect you'll make a lot of money. So this is your tinfoil hat economist signing off at the speed of light. And I look forward to meeting all of you again in episode number 10, when we will further investigate investing in the age of coronavirus.